Our final inductee of the evening is David Mueller, a former columnist of ours and recently retired founder of both Insects Limited and Fumigation Service and Supply. David has been a tireless advocate for pest control, especially in exploring alternatives to methyl bromide and furthering industry knowledge about the use of pheromones. Tonight, let's learn a little about Dave's life and career. Growing up in Evansville, Indiana in the 1960s, David Miller spent many a Saturday morning at a flour mill conducting inspections with his dad, Albert. Albert first introduced young David to structural fumigations too. But Miller didn't have insects on his mind when he started college at Purdue University in nearby West Lafayette, Indiana in 1971. That is, until he switched majors from biology to environmental science. Among the required classes for his new major was an introduction to entomology. He notes that he liked the professor and the class camaraderie and decided to make it his focus. Miller's exposure to the entomology department led to a lasting professional and mentoring relationship with then department head, Dr. John Osmond, who is a member of the inaugural class of the PMP Hall of Fame. In 1976, Dr. Osmond asked Miller, an incoming senior, for resumes to pass around while he was at an industry meeting in Florida. Miller says that small act of generosity led to two job offers before he even graduated and that he treasures his late mentor's friendship. When Miller took a position with Fostox in sales immediately after graduation, Dr. Osmond's words often ran through his mind. Let's educate rather than regulate. Miller embraced the philosophy when he founded Insects Limited, a pheromone research development and manufacturing company. With a motto of start with the insect first, education was a large component of both Insects Limited and the sister company Miller founded two years later, Fumigation Service and Supply. It also informed his long running column in PMP Magazine. Since 1993, Miller and his teams have organized biennial fumigants and pheromones conferences. From the onset, Miller wanted to make sharing through education a global experience, so professionals could be exposed to new ideas and processes. In May 2020, the 14th edition of the conference will take place in Victoria Falls, Zimbabwe. Miller says he has had the privilege to see firsthand that what works in a developed country may not work in a developing country, but the insect biology is the common ground everywhere. Miller extends his educational initiatives to funding scholarships too. Insects Limited and Fumigation Service and Supply have awarded more than $250,000 in scholarships over the past 35 years. While Miller remains passionate about the pest control industry, its regulations, and the evolution of environmentally friendly alternatives, his retirement earlier this year means he can now spend more time with his wife, Mary Beth, and their children and grandchildren, with the local Rotary Club that he helped co-found, and with hobbies such as fly fishing and painting decoy ducks. Sons Pete and Tom continue at the Fumigation Service and Supply and Insects Limited, respectively, while daughter Francie followed in his entrepreneurial footsteps by creating Simply Integrated, a social media and human resources firm that counts both companies on its client roster. Miller contends he has always approached his place in pest control like the insects do. Find a niche and fill it, he says. If you do, you will survive. I would like to start out by introducing my family who's here with us today, and if I like to, if I could, have, have them stand. My wife of 42 years, Mary Beth. Tom, my son, and Dana, would you stand? Francie and Hans Heinrichsen, and my son, Pete. 
I want to also recognize the um, Hall of Fame inductees tonight. Thank you for being here, all of you. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's a pleasure. It's to tell you my story. And I'll try to keep it brief tonight if we can. And one other group that I'd like to thank is the sponsors. And organizations and meetings like this uh, thrive on sponsorship. So many of you in the room, thank you very much for going to your bosses or writing that check to, to be here tonight. I, I, uh, I've done it myself, and, and, and I think it's important for events like this to happen. So tonight, I want to tell you three phases of my 44-year career. I'm a little different in that I started my business when I was 25 years old. I had $2,000. I had a wife that was a teacher that was willing to support me, and I had a lot of ambition. And I had a great education from Purdue University and my high school. And with that, we struck out on our own, and uh, we started Insects Limited and Fumigation Service basically at the same time. One is if you're proactive, you can work with pheromones and monitoring. If you're reactive, you can then get the big hammer and use the fumigants. So it depends on the customers. And we were very much stored product related, stored products being grains and mills and food processing, uh, things like this. Not uh, all commercial, and, and, and none of it was, um, was uh, residential work itself. So we were in a little subset of our, our own when we talk about uh, what we do with stored product protection. But in all, all of it is designed to reduce customer complaints. And I really kind of think of our jobs, of what we do. You know, yes, we want to eliminate the problem, but we want to also protect the brands of those products out there. And we want to be able to reduce the, the impact of the insects. And um, that, I think, has really been a model of ours from all along. Well, the first uh, phase of my career took place when I was 20 years old. I was at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. And in an entomology class, they always make you do a collection. And this class, entomology class, had 100 points. And of course, all of the 4-H'ers that summer knew about it, so they went out and did their collection already. Well, I'm a little bit of a procrastinator, and it was getting cold in October, and I realized that I hadn't collected my insects yet. So I take my girlfriend at the time, Mary Beth, and we go out to a nearby park in West Lafayette. It's Battleground, Tippecanoe and Tyler II, if you remember that. And on our way back home in that 65 white Chevrolet, sporty, uh, I go in down the road, and all of a sudden I slam on the brakes, jump out of the car, grab this insect, an archeriad, a woolly bear, and I jump back in the car, I put it in the container, and I look over at Mary Beth and I say, hey, it's worth 10 points. And she knew from that point on what she got herself into. <laughs> the second phase that I want to talk to you about is more or less about, about our business itself. And you know, in 1981, uh, again, this was a time of change that was going on. Dr. Osmond had been really good to me and in introducing me to a lot of things. I remember the BCE program, which was ARPE at the time, when he handed me a, a little pamphlet and said, son, let's get professional. And that's the kind of encouragement you got out of him as we sat out on the front of Entomology Hall on a sunny day and he's talking to you just as if he's your best friend. What a great individual. I, I, I hope that all of you had a chance to read tonight about him. And Gary, you did a fantastic job of talking about John Osmond. And um, he's just a, a wonderful, wonderful man. But in 1991, after our company had been on for 10 years, uh, we had gone from two people up to about a dozen people. And we decided, you know what, we need to have a mission or a purpose of who we are and what we are and where we're headed. And so we got on a train in downtown Indianapolis and headed for Racine, Wisconsin, the home of S.C. Johnson and Raid. And we had a tour set up for that. But on the whole trip up to Racine and back, our whole real purpose was to discuss what our company is going to do in the future, who we are, what we are, and, and what, how we're going to get there. And so what I'd like to do is we filtered all of that out afterwards, and I'd like to read to you this. And in our nine offices, we have this on the wall that, this, that tells who we are and what we, what we stand for. 
It says, we always want to start with the insect first. Find out what the insect or the pest is and what it likes and what it doesn't like and offer it the things that it doesn't like and it may leave or die. It will leave or it will die. Now some of those might be insecticides. Some of those might be temperature. Some of those might just be cultural changes. But you find out what the insect likes and what it doesn't like and it will leave or it will die. This was one I really do like, and I repeat this to myself a lot. Who we are, to be daring, be safe, be different, and be fair. Be daring, be safe, be different, and be fair. And that you have to remind yourself of that as you go through the daily grind of business. When we want to be known as innovators of the future on fumigation and pest management and in insect communication. We hired a young man out of Ontario, Canada, named um, Alan Van Rijkenhem. He was an entomologist out of Trent College, and for about 20 years, he worked with us. Two years ago, in November, he passed away of brain cancer. But I want to recognize him tonight because he was such an important part of our company in that mission statement and how we directed our company. Uh, Alan, we miss you. Like John Osmond and Austin Frischman, they taught us that education was important. Entomology 515 was a class that I took, and Dr. Osmond talked about let's, re let's educate rather than regulate. And that stuck in my head as I moved forward in, into our business. And we started writing a newsletter on day one, this newsletter, October 1st of 1981. And we had a soapbox in there, and some of you might remember that. Well, 40 years later, and 1,500,000 copies, hard copies later, this newsletter had gone all over the world. We had 60 countries and approximately 20,000 people on this mailing list. And this is how we spread our message, and this is how we created our brand. Educate rather than regulate. Now, in 1972, when the EPA was formed, Dr. Osmond was out in Washington, D.C.'s with Ruckel's house, and they were making the EPA. And really, the EPA was designed by Richard Nixon to get rid of, of DDT because he didn't really care about it, but the general public cared about it. So in taking a look at how they were going to approach these different products, Dr. Osmond then said, you know what? Let's make two classes of chemicals. So let's take a professional class and use those for professional people and less general use. And the people who are professional have to take a minimum standard uh, test or tests to be able to prove that they can use these pro products properly. And oh, by the way, they have to come back and get continuing education to update themselves on a regular basis, state by state. Now this continuing education programs, which we see here today in San Diego, allows for people to be able to do education programs. We started domestically doing these in-house, also doing them state by state. We also started doing them nationally. And then we thought about this one in 1993 to do it overseas. And in Lübeck, Germany, in northern Germany, we put on the first Fumigants and Pheromones Conference. And what I found in 1991 when I was there is that they didn't have this kind of program in Europe. People didn't get together and discuss things and train. It was just like collusion, so they wouldn't do it. So when I brought this program over there, I had no idea whether it was going to work or not. And we got 120 people there. Since that time, we've been to uh, Copenhagen with 325, Monterey with over 300 people. And all in all, we've had uh, Cop uh, uh, Greece, Germany, England, and a variety of other countries. And we went to Adelaide, Australia, and we're going to Africa in next, next May. And I want to invite you all to come to Victoria Falls in, in Africa. I think it's the finest place in Africa. And if you want to come and see the animals and learn a little bit about insects and fumigation, uh, please, uh, please join us. All in all, Insects have allowed me to travel the world, like Denny said, Denny said, and I keep track of it. And Tom and I visited Victoria Falls in July, and that was my 77th country, different country, that I've visited. And the insects have allowed me worldwide. 
I have met some incredible people. I have learned so much from people who make $2 a day, who then survive, but through that survival, they, you, could, you can look at this smile on their face. And I can tell you that some of the happiest people in the world aren't people in developed countries. These developing countries, people are very, uh, they're very happy. And I love to see it when you're walking in the square and some dad has his daughter on his shoulders and they're laughing right down the street. So these are the kind of things that we learn and wonderful opportunities to see the world. You know, Norm Cooper taught us, and this was in Nashville, if any of you went to Nashville uh, in PMA, um, we are the protectors of the environment. I wore a little pin around NPMA, protectors of the environment. And one of the things that happened in 1993 was there was a phase out of methyl bromide, a fumigant that many people used in this industry. And there were some things that went on. I went to Washington, D.C., and we're sitting there listening to these, these scientists talk about it, and this was going to happen. And a guy stood up in the back of the room, and he said, you all are going to go through four things in the process of losing methyl bromide. And we all kind of turned around, a room full of people from all over the world. He said, first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna deny that there's a problem. The second thing you're gonna do, you're gonna question the science. The third thing you're gonna do, you're gonna look for alternatives. And finally, the fourth thing you're gonna do is you're, gonna, uh, you're going to um, deny that you were ever part of the pro of problem. Deny that you were ever part of the problem. So as I left that room and I knew that 55% of our company's business was the use of methyl bromide, I knew right away we were going to have to do something or we were not going to be able to survive. So we started home and we went from, through the, from the first one to the second one and we started looking for alternatives. We tried a lot of things. A lot of things failed. Nothing was as good as methyl bromide. But in combination, we found different items like CO2 and heat and phosphine that affect the, 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 the insects to a point that we could kill insects without using methyl bromide. We patented that. We used it in over 100 applications. Um, those are the kind of things that we learn. I got tapped on the shoulder by a group from United Nations under the Montreal Protocol, and they said, would you like to consult with us? They sent me to countries that I didn't even know were on the map. And I'd go there first to take a look at the, what they had and what they were using and then talk to the people. We would write up a program. We would find funding, $2.4 billion under the Montreal Protocol. And then we went back to these developing countries and we then set up alternatives and ways to phase out methyl bromide. We got a lot of great cooperation. We didn't get cooperation from the developed countries like the United States and Europe and Canada and Japan, but eventually they came around and the Montreal Protocol did it. It was the first international treaty, first international treaty of, of the environment and it worked. And to this day we can see the results from the phase out of methyl bromide as a leader, not so much about methyl bromide, but it was the leader for all the other things that are happening. Paris Accord, the Kyoto, and things that have happened. So I'm very proud of that. I, I, I think we did a good job, and now that we look back, uh, we might deny that we were ever part of the, pro the pro problem, but I think that we were able to help out. The last story I'd like to tell you tonight is about the future. And this is what's going to happen about six months from now. I'm retired. And I'm really enjoying My wife and I, have, the last year, have spent a wonderful time doing things. And we have four grandchildren. And so that's a pleasure for me. If any of you are grand, uh, grandparents, you understand. So this is a trip that we're going to take together. We're going to go up to Purdue University. And we're going to go to Bug Bow. Now, if you've never been to Bug Bow before, it's an insect extra, uh, extravaganza. And last year, over 50,000 people attended this two-day meeting, two-day get-together. Children and students and parents from all over come in to celebrate this. And you might know Tom Turpin. Tom was the creator of the Bug Bow. And I saw him on Friday when Stoy received the, the Osmond Award, and he's doing pretty good. Uh, he got shake, shaken up, but he's doing pretty good. And 
We get in the car, we drive about 60 miles, we get up to Lafayette, Indiana, the kids come out, strollers come out, and we start moving through. And the first thing that we do, and you saw a picture of this, is we stop by the entomologist statue. So we go to the entomologist statue, two of those members are Hall of Fame members, J.J. Davis, John Osmond, and then there's a third one, a female woman named Rachel Carson, who's sitting there and showing John Osmond this tiger uh, moth. Um, uh, swallowtail moth, and then J.J. Davis is sitting there with his spectacles looking out over his, his students. And there's a story that goes along with that. You know, J.J. was the first um, uh, department head at Purdue. Uh, he was also the person who started the Purdue Pest Control Program. John Osmond, the second uh, uh, person, and you heard a lot about him tonight, and he's there as a seven-year-old uh, uh, boy uh, being taught by Rachel Carson now. Many people have different thoughts about Rachel Carson, but I really like her. I've read her books, and she's done a wonderful job. Most of us understand Silent Spring, but there are some other books. Under the Sea was 83 weeks on the New York bestseller list. When's the last time there was a book for 83? It was about nature. It was about uh, poetry, and people read Rachel Carson. And this is an example of, of a female back in the 50s who was able to carve herself out not only as, a, as an oceanographer, not an entomologist, but also as a, uh, a poet that people. And she had two books on the New York, Stock, uh, New York uh, um, bestseller list at the same time. So people read Silent Spring. Now, not all of what was in that book was correct. We know that now. But John Osmond told me several times he said, Dave, he said, we need to put a statue of Rachel Carson on the front of every entomology school in the United States. He said, it's not for what she said, it's for what she did. She said, these departments were able to quadruple the size, like Purdue, of staff and funding from the research that came in after this book was published to be able to look at these chemicals and, and, and how they uh, affect the environment. So Rachel Carson, female of the 50s, she can, you can be a scientist, you can be, um, you can be a poet, and then this is what I tell my grandchildren as we were looking at this statue of, of who these people are. We walk down the street about a half a block away to entomology department in Smith Hall, and I look up on the wall, and there's a hundred, I counted them, there's a hundred pictures of Hall of Famers there. And I look around this room, and I see a lot of people here that were up on that wall, and it's really, really an honor. And, and uh, Motohiro, I took a picture of you, and I, I want to give it to you because you were up on that wall too. And a lot of people like the Dodes, uh, wonderful. People who have had a tremendous effect on my career. And as I go down there and I start telling this, these, these four grandchildren about this Hall of Fame, I get to the 2019 part where, where Dr. Miller and Judy and, and uh, Lonnie, we're all sitting there and I, on, with our pictures on the wall. And I go to point out this, and my four-year-old son, Albert, tugs on my arm. And I look away, and he tugs on my arm again. He says, hey, Papa, let's go see the bugs. So we started out, and we go full, full circle uh, from the insects. Insects have all been very, very good to us, and uh, I'd like for you to raise your glass today to the bugs. <laughs>